Hi there, my name is Graham Lewis and in this short video we're going to talk about the remainder theorem and the fact theorem. We're going to give the remainder theorem what it is, give some examples, prove it, and then show the fact theorem as well. So let's start with the remainder theorem. So when we have a polynomial p of x and it's divided by a divisor ax minus b, the remainder is p of b over a. In other words, if you make this equal to zero, ax minus b, your divisor equal to 0, and solve for x, which would be b over a, and put that into the polynomial p, then the number that you get out is actually the remainder when you were to do the long division, p over x divided by ax minus b. Let's do an example and see what that looks like. Okay, so here we have a polynomial, x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 1, and we want to find the remainder when this polynomial is divided by x minus 2. Now, of course, we could do the long division, but that's pretty long and boring. So the remainder theorem is a quick way of finding the remainder without having to do the long division. So the remainder theorem says that we need to set x minus 2, the divisor, equal to 0 to find out the x value, which is 2, Put the x value of 2 into the polynomial, and that will be the remainder. So p of 2 would be 2 cubed, because it's x cubed, minus 2 times 2 squared, plus 3 times 2, minus 1, which equals 8, minus 8, plus 6, minus 1, which equals 5. So in other words, we've very quickly found the remainder uh, when we divide p of x by x minus 2 without having to do any long division. Let's do another example. Okay, so the same cubic, but this time we're going to divide it by 2x minus 3 and find the remainder if we were to do the long division when it's divided by 2x minus 3. So the remainder theorem says we need to solve 2x minus 3 equals 0. So we get x equals 3 over 2. And it's not as nice, this one, but we need to put that into the polynomial. So we find p over 3 over 2 p of 3 over 2, so it would be 3 over 2 cubed, minus 2 times 3 over 2 squared, plus 3 times 3 over 2, minus 1. And quickly working that out, that's 27 over 8, minus 2 times 9 over 4, plus 9 over 2, minus 1. Well, something nice happens here. Obviously, the 2 over 4 cancel there to give me a 9 over 2. The minus 9 over 2 and plus 9 over 2 cancel. And I'm left with 27 over 8 minus 1, which is clearly 19 over 8. Uh, or if you want to write it as a mixed fraction, 2 and 3 eighths. So we've very quickly found the remainder when p of x is divided by 2x minus 3 without having to do long division by using the remainder theorem. So now let's prove this theorem. So what we want to find is the remainder when our polynomial, a general polynomial, which I'll call p of x, is divided by a linear factor, and the linear factor I'll call ax minus b. Um, so I want to find the remainder when p of x is divided by ax minus b without having to do long division. So from uh, my previous videos, or from your knowledge, you know that if you do long division, um, you get a quotient, which I'll call q of x. That's my quotient. Plus I get the remainder, which I'll call r, which has to be divided by the divisor, ax minus b. A quick number example to show that working is, for example, imagine you've got 13 over 2. How many times does 2 go into 13? Well, 2 goes into 13 six times. That's my quotient. My remainder is 1, which still has to be divided by the divisor 2. So that's how that formula is working. So we know that we can write any uh, polynomial that's divided by ax minus b in this form. It equals the quotient here plus the remainder divided by a divisor ax minus b. What I'm going to do now is multiply both sides by ax minus b. So I get that the polynomial is in fact ax minus b, that's our divisor, times quotient of x, plus, and the ax minus b's cancel, leaving me with r. Now what I'm going to do, and this is the cunning part, I spot that if I set ax minus b equal to 0, it will wipe out this whole term. Because if ax minus b is 0, it doesn't matter what q of x is, 0 times q of x will be 0, which is why we don't need the quotient. So if I solve ax minus b equals 0, I get, of course, x is b over a. So let's put b over a into this equation. 
So b over a into here. So obviously ax minus b is going to be 0. I'll show it. a times b over a minus b, which will be 0. q of b over a. And plus r, because in, in, if, if, a, if the divisor ax minus b is linear, then r is just a number. So of course, a over a cancels and b minus b is 0, as we expected. So if I put b over a into this polynomial, I've got 0 times whatever the quotient is when you put b over a in, plus the remainder. But of course, 0 times this quotient is just 0, so we end up with the probability, not probability, p of b over a, um, when I put b over a into the polynomial, is in fact the remainder, and we've proved the remainder theorem, QED, uh, which is lovely. So that's a nice, quick, easy proof of the remainder theorem. Now, a corollary to the remainder theorem, now corollary just means a special case of the remainder theorem following on from it, is actually called a fact theorem. It's not really a theorem. I would, would, would say it's not really a theorem because it's actually a special case of the remainder theorem. At university, we used to call them corollaries, and um, I used to write core for short for corollary, but kind of like core blimey. If this is true, then core blimey, this is true, which is just my Englishness coming out. So if the uh, P of b over a equals 0, then ax minus b is a factor of p of x, which of course is true because the proof is really simple. It's just, of course, the remainder is 0. So all you need to do is if set r equals 0 in the remainder theorem, then of course you have that p of b over a equals um, ax minus b times q of x plus 0. And obviously, if the remainder is 0, then ax minus b is a factor of uh, p of x. I'll put that there. Now, the factor theorem is going to be really useful because when we're factoring polynomials, we actually want remainders of 0 to find the factors so we can actually factor the polynomial, which is incredibly useful in terms of solving equations equal to 0. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please watch some of my others. I've got uh, videos on long division, and I've also gone to make some videos on factoring polynomials using the factor theorem. Thank you.